I've got a lot of people still asking me, Miss Lori, I know you got old videos making biscuits, but will you make a new video showing us how to make biscuits? Well, I can tell you, <laughs> anytime I get up to make biscuits, I do it probably different every time. But I'm going to make y'all some biscuits. And these are just plain old bacon powder biscuits. I've got two cups of all-purpose flour. And I put about a, mm, half a teaspoon of salt in there, just a couple pinches. And I'm going to add um, a teaspoon and a half of baking powder. Sometimes it just depends on what I'm in the mood. If I want to just mix it up in a bowl and make drop biscuits. Um, if I want to put my hands in there and just pull it all together and pinch my biscuits out. Sometimes I do that. And then sometimes, like this morning, I'm just in the mood. Just like making bread, it just is therapy for me. I'm going to put about a teaspoon of sugar. But I'm going to roll these biscuits out today and cut them out because I've got time. And I just, like I said, it's just like making bread. It's therapy for me. So I'm taking my time this morning. So just mix your dry ingredients up. Now, I told you a while back that I'm out of lard. And uh, those that's been with me a while know that I use lard for everything. And we've got a couple of hogs that's being processed right now. And when we get that, uh, that lard, I'm going to start rendering all that out. And uh, I'll probably do another video on rendering lard. But uh, that's always usually what I use in my biscuits. Or I use butter. Today, I'm going to get in trouble because I'm using buttered flavor Crisco. And um, I'm not using butter because butter has gotten so expensive. But I had this butter flavored Crisco in there. So that's what I'm going to be using this morning. And I don't use shortening hardly ever. So using it this morning in my biscuits is not going to hurt me much. I know a lot of people that use butter flavored Crisco making pie crust. And it is some of the best pie crust. Um, but... It does really bother me being out of fresh lard, I can tell you. But when I rendered my last lard, and I don't remember how many pounds I had, but um, it got me through a couple of years. And uh, so I'm just going to mix this shortening in. And that was three-fourths cup of shortening is what I used to two cups of all-purpose flour. Now I'm just going to use a fork and cut this in. I do have a pastry blender, but fork was right here by me, so that's what I'm using. And you just mix this up good and just, like some people say, just kind of like little pea-sized pieces in there. I don't like messing with my biscuits very much, but you really need to to work that shortening in there. And if you're going to be using butter, the best way to do that is to freeze your butter and um, grate it and just throw it in there. And you really don't even have to really work that butter in there. You just kind of toss it around. But uh, my grandma, she always used lard, but I also seen her use shortening sometimes too. So I don't remember it's because if she ran out of lard just like I did, or maybe she just liked shortening. But I just remember seeing them cans of shortening in the pantry. And it was usually the cheaper shortening, just a, a store brand or something like that. I don't remember her ever having Crisco. But she made biscuits and she made pie crust out of that lard as long as she had fresh lard. And... Uh, that lard set in a big bucket over in the corner. And she'd just dip out what she needed. Whatever she was making. She fried everything in that lard, too. You know, she lived to be a little over 90 years old. We're just going to make sure that's all mixed up good. And then we're going to get some, get you a little buttermilk. Or if you don't have no buttermilk, just use some sweet milk. 
Because either way, it'll work. I'd rather use buttermilk. Um, I use, I usually put, I've got frozen buttermilk, but I forgot to thaw any out. I usually freeze it in little ice cubes. And I put about a half a cup. And you just kind of pull your flour together. Just pull it to the middle. And you can usually look at it and you can feel it and tell that it's going to need a little bit more milk. You can see all that dry flour in there. So I'm going to get my milk and I'm going to put at least another half a cup. And you never know. A cup may be enough and you may have to put a little bit more in there. It just depends on the weather and how dry or how humid it is. Kind of like making bread. You never know sometimes. But I can feel this and I can tell this is plenty of milk. So it's about a cup of milk. And I'll put the recipe down in the description box below my video. And I'm just going to take my fingers now. I can't stand it. Y'all know i got to get in here. i got to play with this dough a little bit. I think a lot of y'all are still having trouble finding my recipes. Um, but just look down below the videos, down underneath the title of the videos, and you'll see the word more, and you click on that word, and uh, my information will come on down, and that's always got my recipes and all my information in there. So we're just going to put this on a flour board, and we're just going to bring it together. And what I'm going to do is once I get this together, so I'm just going to start folding it. I'm going to be real gentle with it. I'm going to fold it a few times. And what that's going to do is it's going to give it layers. It's going to give it flakiness. So if you've got time and you enjoy making biscuits, when you got the time, it just, it's just something I like to do. I guess maybe it's from, I can't remember when I was a little girl, I'd play with Play-Doh and I'd make biscuits and I'd just, like I was just cooking all the time or I'd go outside and I made mud pies and I was just always Pretend like I was a cooking. So I'm going to roll this out just a little bit. And you don't really have to roll it out. If you wanted to, you could just pat it out. I'm going to roll it out probably about half an inch. Now I've got my iron skillet and I think it's a 10 inch. I've got it in a 400 degree oven with uh, about a half a stick of butter in there. Um, and I've got it melting, I got my butter melting. I'm not using shortening or lard or any kind of oil on my biscuits tonight. I'm gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be using butter this time. And I know I was complaining about not using butter but I did want to dip my biscuits in butter and let them cook. And I always like to heat my skillets up just like I would if I was making cornbread. And put them biscuits in that, that hot uh, skillet. And just kind of really crisp up the bottom and browns the bottom of them biscuits. I've got all kinds of biscuit cutters. You can use a, a glass. You can use an old can. I used an old uh, orange juice can for years, just like my grandma did. Made perfect biscuits. But I go to flea markets all the time, and I'm always finding these old biscuit cutters, and I collect them, and I just love them. 
This one right here does a good job of cutting out biscuits. I'm just going to put them in this hot pan with this hot butter. And the reason I got such a small skillet is because I want, if you put your biscuits close together where they're touching each other, they're going to rise just a little bit more than if you space them out and put them on a cookie sheet or something like that. You'll get a flatter biscuit. Uh, we don't like really thick, thick biscuits. These shouldn't get too thick, but they will rise a little bit. But I do like my biscuits to have a little bit of layer to them. And if you want to skip putting any kind of sugar in your biscuit, you don't have to put any sugar in it. I put about a teaspoon, just just enough, you know. You don't want it to be a sweet biscuit, but kind of cuts that flat flour taste just a little bit, baking powder taste, if you want to. And these are going to be swimming in butter. Now, if you use salted butter, just be prepared that the top of your biscuits are going to be a little bit salty. <coughs> but they're going to be good. But you don't have to use the butter like I did. You can put your little bit of oil, a little bit of lard, grease, bacon grease, whatever you got. I'm going to get one more biscuit out of this. And it looks like I've got enough dough left to make probably a couple more biscuits, and I ain't got room for them, but I do have a little bitty iron skillet that would hold two biscuits. So I may just do that. You don't want to work with it too much, but just kind of gather it up. Cut you out a couple more biscuits. I can cut out one more biscuit probably. And then I'm just going to gather the rest of the dough up and just kind of round it up and make me a little biscuit out of it. I ain't going to waste none of this dough. I'll put it in just another little bitty skillet. Melt me some butter in there. Okay, 400 degree oven probably take about anywhere from 15 to 18 minutes and what I'll do is check it and I will have to flip these biscuits one time before they're done because they'll really be brown on the bottom and I like them brown on the top too. It took about 18 minutes and here's our biscuits. Don't they look good? With good layers. I'm going to show y'all something. I am fixing to make me some homemade cleaner. And what I'm using is I've got some lemon balm that uh, I got out of my garden. And I grow lemon balm every year and I make cleaner out of it. So I just kind of massage the leaves and the stems and stuff, and I'm just going to stick them down in this quart jar. And I've got me a little bit of uh, vinegar. I've got white distilled vinegar. It's just uh, from Sam's Club. It's a member's mark, and it's 5%. I don't ever buy any vinegar that's any less than 5%. And I'm just going to fill my, my jar up here. And I'll put a lid on this, and um, I'll just let this sit. Probably let it sit for a couple weeks. And when I'm ready to use it, uh, I'll strain the lemon balm out of it. And then I'll add like 20 drops of uh, eucalyptus uh, essential oil. And I'll probably put about 20 drops of uh, tea tree oil. And uh, that will be a surface cleaner. I'll just put it in a spray bottle and use it. And I won't have to put any kind of smell good in it because that lemon balm is going to make it smell really, really good. Well, it's the next day and it is raining, y'all. Much needed rain. 
we're supposed to get some storms. Nothing bad. A lot of rain, though. Lots of rain. No more complaining. The Lord's blessing us today, for sure. He blesses us every day. But he said, you know, it's time for y'all to get some rain up there on that hill. And he's a doing it. Okay, we're here on another day, and we're fixing to make some breakfast granola bars. Y'all, these are so good. We're going to try to get these together pretty quick. But y'all are going to love these. Um, I'm going to start out. What I've got is two cups of old-fashioned oats here in my bowl. And I poured about a fourth a cup of very hot water over these oats. And you just want them oats just to kind of soak up that hot water. So they've been sitting here and they've been soaking up that water, hot water. You can see there. So that's two cups of oats to a fourth a cup of hot water. So you want to get that done before you start blending everything up. And I'm just going to use my Nutrimil Artiste mixer. I love this thing. And it's got my um, cookie paddles on there. It does a good job mixing up cookies. I've got a fourth a cup of butter. And we're going to be using coconut oil in this recipe. Just use, if you don't have coconut oil, just use some kind of neutral oil. And you want to melt it just a little bit. You don't want that coconut oil to be in a solid. So I just kind of stuck it in the microwave and um, melted it for just a couple seconds. And here I've got some, let's see, that is about a teaspoon of vanilla. And this is my baker's vanilla. That's why it's clear. It's not brown. And this is what I use sometimes. This is very good, very good vanilla. I just love it. It has a really good taste to it. That was six tablespoons of uh, coconut oil and a teaspoon of vanilla. And we're just going to mix that up just a little bit. I know a lot of y'all asked me about this blender. Y'all see me use it, especially making uh, bread dough and stuff like that, making cinnamon rolls, and I just love it. I'm going to put in a half a cup of sugar. But you can put in a half a cup of honey. I'm going to put in a third a cup of uh, packed brown sugar. And I'm going to stir that just a little bit. Those cookie paddles do such a good job. We're going to add one egg. And I'm going to kind of break it and put it in a, and got eggshell in there. So now I'm going to have to dig the eggshell out. <laughs> I don't hardly ever do that, but you put me on camera and I'm going to get eggshell in it. You know, um, they used to sell this mix this mixer on Amazon, and I will look, but for some reason I think they may have quit selling it, but you can go to uh, the Nutrimill website and uh, pretty much get up, get any um, setup that you want. I'm going to add my oats, my two cups of oats. It's been soaked in hot water. I'll have this recipe down in the description box too. You know, I love a good granola bar, a good breakfast bar, but it's hard to find one that 
just doesn't taste artificial to me. So I would rather have them homemade. They just taste so much better. Mix that up a little bit. I'm going to add one cup of all-purpose flour. And you may be able to do the same exact recipe with, oat, with the almond flour. I put in, oh, it's about a half a teaspoon of baking soda and a half a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to scrape down the side just a little bit. You know, sometimes you just don't have time in the morning to make you a big old breakfast. So, something like this to grab and go, it's, it's just good for you and it just, it's delicious. I'm going to put some cranberries in here. Probably about a third of a cup of dried cranberries. You can use raisins if you want to, or pretty much any kind of dried fruit. You may have to cut some of them up a little bit. And I'm going to put several handfuls of chocolate chips. What would you say? That's, <laughs> I'm sure that was over a cup of chocolate chips, but you put as many as you want. I like a lot of chocolate chips. But if you can add any kind of dried fruit to it, and like I said, just chop it up if it's very big. And I'm going to put some pecans in here. You can put walnuts, almonds, cashews. That was probably a little over half a cup or so of chopped pecans. Now I'm going to put... This is a 9 by 13 baking dish, and I have got parchment paper in it, and I even sprayed my parchment paper because, I don't know, I'm a little OCD about that stuff, I don't know. But putting it in this 9 by 13 baking dish is going to make kind of a thicker uh, breakfast bar, but if you don't want them thick like that and you want them just a little bit thinner, you can bake these on a cookie sheet, you know, a, um, a cookie sheet that's maybe just a little bit bigger than a 9 by 13, but uh, I would for sure do it on parchment paper. But these are just so delicious, so good. And these freeze really good too. So with me and Mr. Brown, we can't eat this <laughs> this whole thing. I can put some up in the freezer and get them out as I need them. You could put some coconut in here if you wanted to. And if you have kids that don't like nuts, you don't have to put pecans or anything in there. Instead of chocolate chip, you could put the peanut butter chips or uh, the white chocolate chips. But once you get all this in there, you just kind of press it down. And I've got my oven heating about, it's like it's on 350. I think they'll do good in my oven at 350. And I'm just going to kind of pat it down good. And I'm not sure how long it's going to take till I get done. Um, I'm going to say anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. I'm going to check them at 20 minutes. Because a lot of times in my oven I have to um, kind of turn around, turn my baking dish around because the back wants to cook just a little bit more than the front. So, we're going to stick this in the oven. 
then we'll see how long it takes. So there it is. Don't that look so good? Looks like a huge granola bar, don't it? So it took, it took about 25 minutes and I checked it at 20 and uh, it just wasn't brown enough for me. So I turned my pan around so the other side would brown better. So anywhere from 25, 30 minutes in your oven. And you wanna let these really cool before you go to cutting them, but I don't have time for that. So they're not cool completely, but we are gonna cut them in squares and try not to eat all of them. And I can put, I can put probably three together and get quite a few breakfasts out of these. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that, but it just, all that goodness in that bar, the chocolate chips and the nuts and the cranberries, yummy. It's so good. Y'all gonna love this recipe. So there's you another, another breakfast recipe. And I hope y'all try it. You know, you got to find the joy in housekeeping because if you don't, it just becomes this job, you know, <laughs> just this job that, that, uh, that you just don't like, you know, you don't look forward to it. So, I mean, I find a lot of relaxation and a lot of, um, I don't know, just, just like coming out and hanging up clothes. These clothes smell so good, clean, and the air today is dry with a little bit of breeze. And I know that it won't take long for them to dry, but I just feel like sometimes people just, they don't look forward to um, the housekeeping part of their life. It's just, um, they just dread it. They just dread the whole. And you got to put, I don't know, just a little bit of happiness in it. Don't make it a job. Um, make it uh, just something that, that you enjoy doing. I mean, of course, you know, who loves enjoy doing laundry? Well, you can make it enjoyable. Don't make it such a, a dreaded job that you have to do. Um, I just love hanging clothes out. I think about my grandmother, she had a clothesline back behind her back porch and um, there was always clothes hanging out there on that clothesline. She hardly ever, ever, ever used her dryer and she had a dryer, but she didn't hardly ever use it. And I remember she washed clothes every day. She didn't go several days or all week and have tons of laundry. I know so many people do that. They have tons of laundry by the end of the week and I can see how that could get dreadful and you're just not looking forward to doing your laundry. But when you can get to a point in your life that just doing household chores like this for you and your family, um, like I said, you just had to, to look forward to it and make it an enjoyable situation or you will forever just dread the job. I know there's a lot of people that just absolutely do not like housework and um, go in your house, turn you some music on, whatever kind that you like to listen to. And I can tell you, I clean better when there's nobody in the house. That's the truth. Even Mr. Brown, 
I like it when he's out doing his thing, then I can really get in there and really start cleaning and turn my music on and and um I don't dread it. I can just get in there and whatever needs to be done and just make a, a happy situation out of it because if I dreaded this, if I dreaded housework constantly, I would just be in a bad mood all the time. Who wants to do that? We're going to put some peas up. Got Danny went out and picked some more peas. Now these are dried peas. In this jar, this is dried peas. So when I shell the peas, I get some that are already dried on the vine, and then I've got some that aren't. And these are, these are, I'm going to go get my funnel so I don't waste half these peas down the sink. So when I get some that are dry on the vine and I shell them, I just put them in this jar, and you can use these just like you would any dry bean, um, cook them, but I'll use a lot of these to replant next year. So I'll just put them in this jar for, keep them in there, and I'm still going to have a lot of peas coming. And then these are just the fresh peas, regular peas on, that uh, I shelled, and these aren't dried, these are just... These are ready to cook and eat or to put in a freezer or you can can them. But I'm going to clean them. You want to make sure that you rinse your fresh peas off after you shell them because there's always going to be a little bit of dirt on there. And then after I wash them, I put them out on a towel and I just I let them dry because these right here I'm going to put in the freezer. Now, later on when I get several bags of peas, these are the Red Ripper peas, the cow peas. I will get them out and uh, thaw them out, and then I'll probably can them just like I did the other ones. I had somebody say the other day in a comment that, uh, you know, my, my videos are so real that my house is not uh, just immaculate, and I even have dirty dishes. That just made me laugh. I thought, you are so right. I've always got dirty dishes, but if you see these dishes over here in my sink, those are all clean. I don't have a dishwasher, and if I'm here most of the day, you better believe there's going to be a pile of dishes to do, especially if I'm making videos. But all of them are clean. I swear they are. I got me a little bit of cleaner here, and I love this cleaner. It's uh, Method. It's what it is. It's the brand name Method. And I love all their cleaners, but this is a bacterial cleaner here. And uh, I use it every day. And when I really get serious, I get me a little bit of bleach water. Because there's nothing that that kills germs any better than bleach. I've worked in the school system too long. <laughs> I know what kills them germs. We're just going to take the peas and we're just going to pour them out here on this clean towel and what I do is I just spread them out and then I'll let them dry overnight and then tomorrow I'll bag them up. I don't want to bag them up while they're wet because they'll just stick all together. And I could keep these in the freezer till I want to cook them. But I've got more peas I know coming and just as soon as I get a bunch of them I'll be canning them. You know, washing clothes sometimes can be just another dreaded job. And you know, it's not that I don't, I don't, it don't bother me to wash clothes. I always feel good when I get all my laundry clean. And I don't understand how many, me and Mr. Brown can mess up enough clothes. But washing clothes is just another homemaking job. You know, if you're a homemaker and, and you're home, and it's just one of them things that you do for your family. You want them to have clean clothes, and it always makes you feel better when you got all your laundry done. Funny thing about my laundry is 
I use several different kinds of laundry soap. I've got my homemade laundry soap, and I've got a, a video on that, older video. And then some of my laundry, some of my clothes, I use a, a different detergent on. And I even use, this is a fabric softener by uh, Method, and I just love this stuff. You can order this online, or you can get it. Um, I think I, I got mine at Menards and Poplar Bluff. And uh, I've been trying it out, all the Method products, and I really like them. So when you live in a small house that doesn't have huge closets, kind of like hardly any closets, because it was kind of built in the same way they would have built a small family home way back when. Of course, back then they didn't have a lot of clothes either. And this right here is kind of ridiculous. But I'll tell you what this is. This is mine. It's just mine. And it's anywhere from my work clothes to uh, uh, my Sunday clothes for church. I mean, and that's it right there. So I don't feel too bad about that. But sometimes I get overwhelmed with it and um, I just start purging my clothes and start giving them away. Things that I haven't probably worn in a while. And I, I'm not a clothes shopper, so I don't buy a lot of clothes either. Uh, Danny has his own little closet. It's not very big, but uh, it holds what he needs. But we're just not big on clothes. But, you, you know... When you're still working out in the public, you have, you have to have something decent. And, uh, of course, our Sunday clothes, um, you don't really need a lot for that either, to tell you the truth. Uh, you just need three or four outfits and uh, just wear them over and over. When they wear out, go get you a couple more or one more, just kind of. But, uh, but sometimes I get a little anxious because I'm like, okay, I've got so much room. I've got this right here, which is my uh, my only dresser, really. And it's like, okay, I got to choose between what I hang up and what I, what I fold up and put in a dresser. So that's when, after a while, I do start getting anxious and I just start getting rid of stuff. Um, well, how do you get so much clothes if you don't clothes shop? Well, being working in the Publix at school, um, I like to wear scrubs, and I always have, ever since I've worked in the cafeteria. They're comfortable. They make really pretty ones. they got pockets to put your pens, your glasses. Uh, I carry little notepads around because I'm always having to write stuff down. So I love to wear scrub shirts. Scrub shirts, brand new ones, are really expensive. So I either try to find them on sale or I find them at yard sales or thrift stores. So, uh, but yeah, living in a <laughs> in a small area, and it's probably not any smaller than what a lot of y'all have. We just have one bedroom, one bath. Um, but the clothes situation sometimes overwhelms me. But I just I just settle down and do what I know I need to do. And that's either to, uh, to purge it a little bit, figure out what needs to be hung up and what needs to be folded. I've also, in my, my dresser here in the washroom, which is where my clothes are, uh, I keep the grandkids extra clothes, too, so I've always got stuff for them. But, yeah, it gets overwhelming sometimes. But you just... I don't... I guess it's the way I grew up. Uh, we wear clothes till they're plumb wore out or so stained up you're embarrassed to even wear them, wear them out to the garden. But that's clothes that I've got, too. I keep clothes back, and Danny does, too, that... He can get greasy, or I can go out and work out in the garden or do something that's just really filthy, 
and put these stained up old ratty clothes on and then, you know, not worry about my clothes. Uh, so you've always got that situation. So <laughs> I've always thought how I would love to hire a or, uh, professional organizer to come in and just say, okay, this is what we need to do. So, anywho, I know a lot of y'all probably have plenty, plenty of closet space in your houses. I wouldn't trade my little house for nothing in the world to have bigger closets. I just got to figure out a better organization. And like I said, just keep purging and getting rid of stuff that I just absolutely don't need. Uh, just like right now, um, we're fixing to start school and it's going to be so hot. It's going to be so hot. So I really don't buy much to start school in because I still have plenty of scrub shirts and stuff. Unless I just find some that's just really cheap and I ain't going to pass them up. But as winter comes on and uh, I won't have to buy any sweaters this year. Uh, or anything like that, a coat or anything, because the ones I've got, I've had for two years now, and they're still in really good shape. And my work coat, it's in good shape. So that's not something I'm going to have to purchase this year. But I may have to start purchasing maybe a few long sleeve shirts, because I, <laughs> I got rid of a bunch of them in the spring when I was purging. And... Uh, I just kept saying, I don't need this, I don't wear this, I don't wear this, I don't, and I can't stand this, and uh, so I just either give them away or, well, most of them I give away. So that's just a, one of the issues in a small home when you don't have a lot of closet space, but it's not anything that you can't deal with, because the way I feel about it, you got way too many clothes in. And that's the way I feel right now. I mean, this is it. This is my clothes. Right here. That's for work and church. And then, you know, maybe it does look like I got too much, but I don't know. Um, if something's still in, in decent shape, it's very hard for me to get rid of. But I, I do it every once in a while. But uh, there's some dresses and and blouses and stuff for church and then I, I got my work stuff but my everyday clothes like this I just fold up and put in a little dresser so it's you know I just go back and forth with it I, when I'm just getting so frustrated with the room uh, I just start purging I just always have some kind of a little bag here and I know if I'm not haven't worn this in a while or just don't like it anymore I just put it in the bag and as time goes on I'm I'm making more room so it's as hard as you try to minimalize stuff it seems like clothes has become a hard thing for me but I never had a lot of clothes it's not that it's not that I think I need a bunch of clothes it's just finding a place to put all of it because um, because this is it this is this is what I've got and it's right here in my washroom by the washroom dryer and it's very, I love it because everything's just right here. When I'm working and doing laundry, you know, it's just, I don't have to walk from room to room to room to put everything up. It's just all right here. But uh, this would probably make a lot of y'all very anxious. You'd be like, oh, I can't handle that. But uh, it works good for me. And uh, my choice was to live in a small house with very few walls for the reason of keeping it warm and keeping it cool and, uh, just different reasons like that. So, if y'all have any good ideas for me, I'll listen to them. I do have some shelves up here on top that are constantly so unorganized, but it's not just my stuff, it's Mr. Brown's. And I I have to share with him, because he has stuff, you know, that he can't put out in his shop that he has to have inside the house um, to keep him from ruining. So, it's just one of them things that you have to deal with and just figure out. We're going to be here nine years in December, and uh, as time goes on, I'm still figuring stuff out and, and making things just a little bit more organized and better. And uh, I will be 
showing y'all in a video pretty soon what we've done here lately to uh, to give me more storage and pantry room. And I think y'all really gonna like it. I want to share a product that I use, and this is Lundberg uh, rice, and this comes out of California. And I've been using this brand of rice for a long time, and I order this online. <clears throat> this is a long grain brown rice. It's all organic. Um, I buy different different kinds of rice. I use the, the brown and it's just for different recipes because I just love any kind of rice that don't matter. So I usually get the jasmine and the brown and the uh, basmati uh, rice and the short grain. And like I said, I just use different different rices for different recipes and stuff but this is my favorite brand and uh, you can do your research uh, Lundberg uh, out of California online and you can read about the uh, the way that they raise the rice and how long they've been in business they've been in business for many and many years and um, just a really good product I ordered two boxes of these right here for my daughter that she loves rice and this is a wild uh, rice uh, mix here with porcini mushroom sauce in it so I thought she might like it I haven't never ate it never tried it but we're gonna see if she likes it and I ordered some of these these are called thin stackers they are rice crackers this is a cracked black pepper and um, I just wanted to try them because I like them. They're and for y'all that are gluten free, these are gluten free. But I wanted to try them, see if I liked them. And this one is out of brown rice, thin stackers. So you can go online, and I think Amazon may sell it, but I think it's a little higher on Amazon. And I even think now this right here are organic uh, rice cake minis, and I got these for the grandkids. This one's apple pie. I think they love the little uh, mini rice cakes. I think you can also get, sometimes you can find this rice at Walmart. You won't get as many different brand, uh, or different kinds, but I think you can find it at Walmart sometimes. But anyways, I order mine online, and um, it I get it pretty quick, too. But... Uh, <clears throat> See, the, the brown rice was 32 ounces, and the other two bags of rice was 64 ounces each. And then it was $66, but organic rice is not cheap. It's not going to be as cheap as your regular rice, but um, if I can afford it, I order it, and it lasts me and Mr. Brown a long, long time. And uh, the, the bags that they come in will keep them fresh and keep the bugs out. They're very well... It's just a really good company. I trust them. Thank you for spending time with me today. I've really enjoyed it. Y'all have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe. And me and Mr. Brown will see y'all in a couple of days. God bless everybody.